Good day, everybody. Welcome to the SolidCAD Point Cloud Processing Webinar. Today we'll be discussing the Autodesk infrastructure solutions such as InfraWorks Civil 3D Recap. The software that civil engineers require to manage and work with point clouds. My name is Matt Kohlberg. I'll be your presenter today. Scott Kamira will be on the line answering your questions. Please use the questions panel if you have any questions. Um, I'll check in with Scott later to see if there's any other questions that are outstanding. So for now, let's begin. Here's what we're going to talk about today. What is a point cloud? What are our goals with those point clouds? How are they created? And what role does Autodesk products play? We'll talk about the Autodesk products that civil engineers need to manage um, their point clouds. Well first, what is a point cloud? Wikipedia defines it as a set of data points in space. Point clouds are produced by various means which measure a large number of points on the external surfaces of objects around them. Well what you're looking at, the two images, that's a point cloud. The one on the left is a further back view and it, it almost looks like a photograph but as you can tell on the right we've zoomed in a little bit and you can see the individual points that make up a cloud. So a point cloud is really just a large number of points that have been reflected off various items on the planet. Alright, what are our goals with these clouds? Now, depending on the industry your goals will differ but the civil engineer these are our typical goals. We generally want our clouds to be geolocated. We need to make a terrain model or a surface from those points. We'd like to create line work, curbs, paint lines, etc. We want to create ortho images and we want to visualize the cloud. For example, the bottom left image, that's uh, elevation banding for cloud. But how are they created? How are the clouds created? Well, there's, there's several different ways to create a point cloud. The first that many people think of is LiDAR. And this is generally an aircraft that flies over the site. The equipment on board is very high tech. Uh, we need accurate GPS. We need accurate positioning of the aircraft not only in space but how where the aircraft is pointing the yaw pitch and roll axes and then of course we need the laser on board that shoots the laser beam down uh, to the ground that reflects back up uh, lidar also exists on the back of a pickup truck for example um, the cloud that we're using today was actually picked up by vehicle mounted lidar it does not have to be an aircraft. Cancel sells this type of scanner, so tripod mounted scans. So that scanner that you see on the tripod, it'll spin around 360 and, and the laser spins around on a, on a horizontal axis, shooting lasers out in 360 degrees and by the time the scanner has made 360 degree turn, it's managed to collect all the data around it that it can see. Even your phantom drone, your phantom quadcopter mounted with a camera can create point clouds just from photography. In fact, you know, if you were able to mount your iPhone, let's say, on this type of aircraft, pointed down, and just shoot photos every second or so as you flew around, the technology exists where you can take those photographs and make a three-dimensional model, make a point cloud from them. So that's three typical ways that clouds are created. Alright, so now we have a cloud. Now we get to use the Autodesk software. So the first one we typically use is Recap. Now there's different versions of Recap. There's a version of Recap that comes with Civil 3D and then there's Recap Pro and you can purchase that separately or or it comes with your AEC collection 
Now, Recap Pro does, of course, things that the freely available Recap does not, such as register scans. But let's just talk about Recap Pro. So what do we do with Recap Pro? Well, first we import a scan, now, or a LiDAR, or some kind of cloud. If that's just one scan, that's great. You're done with Recap. You save it as a Recap file, RCP, and then you bring it into the various Autodesk products. But as you can see here, take a look at the image on the top right. There's four areas that appear to be sort of circles. There's that area, there's this, there's that, and there's this. What this tells me that this data set was created using a tripod mounted scanner and, and those points that I have circled that's where the tripod was situated. And so when we have four scans like this the scanner doesn't know where it is on the planet. Really the, the scanner center point is zero zero zero. Initially when you bring them into recap they're going to be exactly right on top of one another. So we need to register the scans to place them properly. You can certainly do manual registration but recap pro has tools to auto register these scans based on the various features in the scan it has the ability to automatically register them and place them in the appropriate location right. what do we do then when the scans are placed properly well then we need to edit the clouds we need to create groups select objects delete objects export them to another type of file we create view states, we can measure points, we can clean up some noise. We need to geolocate it, so we set ground control points. We can mark up notes, place tags. Um, we can merge laser scans with photo models, and finally we can create a video. So let's get into it. Let's do a recap demonstration here. Here's Autodesk Recap. There's the point cloud we're going to be using. I'll just zoom around a little bit here. It's a bunch of trees on the left. You can see the road. You can see the paint lines on the road. Because scanners not only record the X, Y, and Z of the position that the laser hits, it records color information as well. We have a looks like a building on the right there's some power lines there's some grass well you can see what we have street lights this these are two scans there they have been registered already I'm gonna head over here just so I can take a look and there's my two scans right there and there when I hover on this area tells us that we have about 19 million total points. Well, how do we know which scan is which? Well, I can certainly use this interface to turn off all the scans and turn on the ones that I just want to see. We can create something called scan regions. We'll select a certain number of these scan points and we can name them. So when I hover over this region, that's number 105, this is number 106. That To create this, I just selected some random points and named it, really is all I did. And you can colorize them uh, any way you like. Should I need to export any number of points to a different file, I use scan regions. I have import and export buttons here and of course a plus to create a new region. View states, just like if you were using AutoCAD, the view command inside AutoCAD really behaves the same right here. So I click here and I zoom into a, an area that I've previously defined with a name called car. You can see the car on the left. There's the start of the road. Here's another view state I created called road measure. 
Now I created this particular state because I have some annotations in this area which I've turned off. So there's a dimension I've created and there's a tag that I've created. So you can dimension, you can label, you can notate, notate any area that you wish and you can turn them on and off at will. Now when you're dimensioning it's not all just about the dimension itself. Highlighting this dimension, we see not only the dimension in three dimensions, I can see the Z option uh, as well. So in this case, I'm measuring the width of a lane, or a couple of lanes, and I can see that it's 0 0.292 meters higher at the center. Uh, this box is the dimension with an added tag as well. If I had an image taken, let's say, with my camera, I could attach that here as well. And for the most part, this is what recap is used for. Uh, to get a point cloud into Civil 3D or AutoCAD or InfraWorks, it must come in as an RCP file, a recap file. So whatever type of cloud you receive, be it an LAS or E57 or just a simple text file, it has to come into recap first and you need to save it so that it can be used inside the other Autodesk software. Now I don't have a demonstration for this one but I'll, I'll talk to it. Recap Photo. Recap Photo comes with Recap Pro which of course comes with your AEC collection. Recap Photo is used to create 3D models from photographs. Now those 3D models, they could be an object like a car or a sign, let's say, or a building, or an aerial view, such as something a civil engineer would use. Let's say our goal is to calculate the volumes of a stockpile, just a big pile of dirt. So we can send up our drone with a camera, take a bunch of photographs, run it through Recap Photo, and it'll give us a three-dimensional model, another point cloud. Uh, you can use up to a thousand photos to create your models. You can even create ortho photos from those photographs. Uh, and Recap Photo also creates meshes for use in other 3D modeling software, and, and it has tools such as uh, uh, fill hole. The two images on the right, on the top, we had a hole in our mesh and recap photo was used to fill that hole. The image on the bottom left, you can see all the little cyan dots all over the place. That was the path our UAV took when it was taking these photographs. The workflow here is you take your photos, you create a project, and the photos are uploaded to the Autodesk servers, they're processed in the cloud, and then you get an email that says when your model is ready, and then you download your model. InfraWorks could be next, Civil 3D could be next. I like to put InfraWorks here. After I have the cloud that's ready to go, even if my ultimate goal is to do detailed design inside Civil 3D, I, I like to bring the cloud into InfraWorks first because there's a few things I typically need to do and those couple things are, are, are quite, uh, quite nice inside of InfraWorks. So first we import it into InfraWorks. We can visualize the point cloud via themes and classifications. We can create a surface or a terrain model um, and then these next three things InfraWorks does really well. We can extract linear features, paint lines, curb lines, things like that, because you know, one of the goals is line work. As a drafting exercise, the drafter would usually have to use the polyline command and connect up all the dots. But if we can get InfraWorks to do it for us, for the most part, so much the better. Uh, vertical feature extraction. You can see trees and cars and a home and street lights in the image below. InfraWorks can create these things automatically 
based on information from the cloud. If it detects what it what it appears to be, what it thinks it's going to be a tree or a car, InfoWorks will actually import and insert an actual three-dimensional model of a tree or a car or a street sign. Um, lastly, transverse lines. Um, what are they? Well, I'll, I'll get to those in a second. So let's open up InfoWorks. Now, you can clearly see the point cloud. There's some power lines on the right, there's some trees on the left, there's a building. Um, but there's more here as well. This model was created using the InfraWorks model builder. And then I just simply inserted the point cloud into it. So this model, to get to this point, really only took a couple of minutes. Um, I did have to wait a little while to download the files, but here we are. Now you see areas where the terrain is on top of the point cloud and the point cloud is on top of the terrain. That's because the terrain came from the model builder and we haven't created the terrain from the point cloud yet. Once the terrain is done from the point cloud it'll all be synchronous. I'll switch to a different proposal here, one that contains the cloud already, sorry, one that contains the terrain already. So this proposal has already been processed, the terrain model already created. So the way we create a terrain from a point cloud is, we'll use this button here. Our form comes up, there's the point cloud that we're going to use. We have different varying methods for processing. To create the ground model, optimum is what most users use, but if you have a requirement to use less detail or more detail or even customize the processing algorithm you can. Same thing with linear features, the automated line work if you will. And same thing with vertical features, the tool that creates the trees and creates the cars directly from the point cloud. We'll override the model point cloud, which is exactly what we need to do. If we didn't do that, we'd have a secondary terrain. We're going to generate lightweight data just to make the model as efficient as possible. We can override this and choose every single point, or we can choose just key points to make it even lighter. And then once it's processed, do we want to export that process file, maybe for use inside Civil 3D? So for example, this cloud contained about 19 million points. After processing, maybe it's going to contain 5 million points. Depends on the processing choices that you've made. Now, I would click Start Processing, but I don't want you to wait. I've already done it. But that's how you create a terrain uh, from a point cloud inside InfraWorks. Once the terrain is created, then probably we'll do some point cloud modeling. This is the tool that creates the 3D models from the point cloud. So what happens is the software selects an area and zooms into that area and, and it's essentially asking me, okay, what is this thing? Now, there's not really enough points on that area to really understand what it is. So I, I don't know what it is. Um, I am going to filter my category to trees, though. There we are. So, InfraWorks has determined, it thinks, okay, this appears to be a tree, and, and I can see, based on the blue points from the cloud, eh, it looks like a tree to me. And so InfraWorks is suggesting, let's use this three-dimensional model for that tree, and I agree. So I'm just going to click Next. Zooms to the next tree, zooms to the next tree, and so on. We can change our category to street lights, let's say. Well, it looks more like a sign, so let's skip to the next one. There we go. Those points look like a street light to me, and as we can see, InfraWorks has inserted a street light. So you just go through all of the pre-selected objects here and uh, choose which three-dimensional object uh, and its rotation. All right, what about themes? I would like to take a look at our point cloud themes. 
I'll turn on this theme. It's called classification. This was automatically created um, when I process the point cloud. And so when InfoWorks determines there's vegetation, it colorizes them accordingly. When it determines it's a ground point, it colorizes it, and so on. Right, as you can see, all the points have been colorized to match the classification. Now, some point clouds, LAS, for example, are quite often classified when you get them. And so if they're already classified, they will already come over classified into InfraWorks. But this is InfraWorks doing its own classification. Now it's time for linear feature extraction. I'll launch the tools. I'll choose the style, which is really just color and width, survey code, and feature code. You can match up your surveyor's code with the style. I just pick two points along the paint that I see. the software will process the cloud and connect appropriate points with a line. And there's our line. We can even connect up non-contiguous, like our, our passing lane here. I'll pick my first point inside this area and the second point inside that making sure to get right on the paint. And there's our second line. So spend the appropriate time and connect these lines automatically. I don't have any curb in this data set. If I did, it would actually be able to detect what the top and bottom of curb is. Now that I have one of these lines selected, I can now create my transverse lines. I'll just leave the defaults as is, hit OK, and you'll be able to see what they are. Really, they're just perpendicular lines drawn from the selected feature, draped over the train. There we are. I can use all these features now. The orange lines that I've drawn, the yellow-green transverse lines, I can then bring those into Civil 3D and help create a terrain inside Civil 3D with those things. Zoom out a little bit so you can see them. There they are. Now to get those into a file Civil 3D can read, I can export them right here. All right, so I can export the ground grid points if I choose to, I can export the linear features, the paint lines, the curb lines, the transverse features, and even the vertical features, all to a target coordinate system, and there's my uh, folder selected. Right? So I'll start the export, then we'll have some files that Civil 3D can work with. And for now, that's all I need from InfraWorks. Uh, Civil 3D can create a surface model from a point cloud, but the InfraWorks tool has what I believe to be a better algorithm, and it has the ability to connect the dots and create these transverse lines. So this is why I like to use InfraWorks as my intermediary step before I get into Civil 3D. Speaking of Civil 3D, what are we going to use it for? Yes, I can import the RCP if I need to. Uh, I'll visualize the point clouds. What you see on the bottom is an elevation banding. Darker reds are lower in elevation, brighter reds are higher. We can crop clouds inside Civil 3D and AutoCAD, and finally, of course, we can create surfaces. All right, here is Civil 3D. The terrain's already been done. In fact, I just brought that right in from InfraWorks, um, but you can see the point cloud there as well. So let me switch to a top view. Now, 
since I created the terrain model in InfoWorks, I don't really need to do that here, but I will show you how it's done. First, I'll select the point cloud. Okay, point cloud is selected. Once it's selected, the ribbon has a tool called Create Surface from Point Cloud. I'm naming the surface. This is where I select which points to create the surface from. Now, I only have one point cloud, but I could create a surface from any number of point clouds inserted into this drawing. This is how many points we have of the entire cloud. But this tool over here can be used to decimate the information down to something Civil 3D can handle. Civil 3D has no problem with one or two million points in a single surface. But 50 or 80 million points is, is, is a lot for Civil 3D and it's, it's going to be slow if it doesn't. So one of the two things that we absolutely need to do with a point cloud is decimate it down to a number that Civil 3D can handle, such as 2, 3, 4 million points. The other thing is to get rid of everything, all, all the points that are not ground. All the shots on the tree leaves, all the shots on the power lines, buildings, we need to remove those. It's called ground filtering. Now, InfraWorks does that. Civil 3D, this tool, does it as well. Now, so this is the decimation page. The next page is the ground filtering page. So you make the appropriate choice here, and then create surface. I'm not going to do it because I already have a surface. After a small amount of waiting, you'll have a surface from your point cloud. So we have the surface already. I brought it in from InfraWorks. Now, what about those linear features? and the transverse lines I created from InfraWorks. How do I bring those in? Well, Map Import is the tool that brings in shape files, and that's the type of file that InfraWorks exported. There's my file. Now I do want to create object data. Each line has a feature code and some information about it embedded in the shapefile, and I want that information to come over. There they are. There's a couple of lines right here. As you notice, they're both 3D polylines. They can be used as break lines to create your surface in Civil 3D. But what about those transverse lines I created in InfraWorks? How do I bring those in? Well, they do not get exported as a shape file. They ex get exported as your typical CSV, your, your normal point file. So I'll bring them in as if I was bringing in a normal surveyor's point file. It stores it as the ENZ format. I'll add it. I'll add them to the imported points group. Hit OK. I'll select them using the point group that I created just so we can see where they are. And there's our points. So we can make a surface in Civil 3D from these points and from those linear features. They don't actually have to bring the surface in from InfraWorks. And now we have a terrain. And so you can continue on with your normal Civil 3D design at this point. And that's essentially the workflow that a civil engineer would use uh, with point clouds. All right, so what did we determine a point cloud was? We determined our goals. We learned how point clouds were created. And we learned what recap, recap photo, InfraWorks and what Civil 3D does, how to bring those clouds in, and what each software application is responsible for in terms of point clouds.
So on behalf of SolidCAD and Scott and Daniela, our marketing team, my name is Matt Kohlberg. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I uh, hope you join us next time. Thank you.